Good morning guys! Happy Sunday! Today is a very beautiful day. I want to show you guys what is the view of our house. Look what the front of our house is. It's such a beautiful view. Look at that! Can you guys see it? How beautiful is that? Look! This is the view of our house. Isn't that pretty? Very pretty. I'm very excited for the day. Ooh. Hi guys. Samuel. Samuel. He's well, actually to... Samuel wants to play with Harvey. Before he wasn't like very aware of the dog, but now he's very excited about Harvey now. Like he just loves to play nice with him. Harvey. Yeah, he's still learning how to be nice. He, sometimes it has a little rough, but look at that. He's having fun with Harvey. Isn't that cute? It was kind of an unusual night for Samuel because usually Samuel, as you know, he sleeps through the night. He sleeps 12 hours a night from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And last night we put him down and an hour later, maybe 8 o'clock p.m., he started crying and it was a different cry. Um, I could see that it was a different cry. So I went in the room to see what was wrong and I thought maybe he was in pain because he's teething his... Uh, he has five teeth at the same time, four molars and one up front, and they're still not completely grown. Hey, so I gave him some teething medicine, but he's still crying a lot, and so I started breastfeeding him, and he breastfed a lot. Like, he was really hungry, and after this, he just went back to bed, and he wasn't crying anymore, so I came to the conclusion that he was just hungry. This morning, he ate a lot for breakfast, so... He, right now he looks, looks like he's in a very good mood, he's very playful, he's happy, content. So I don't really, I'm not sure what really happened last night. Maybe it was just a growth spurt or maybe he was just hungry and, oh well. Well, he's gotten four of these shapes onto the puzzle correctly. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I put, I put this one on. Uh, no, actually, f five shapes. He's gotten five shapes. I put this one on. But the rest of these, he put on there in their correct spot. Mm, see, if nice. see if he'll do it again right now. See if he'll do it. See if he can get it. Show Daddy. Show Daddy where that one goes. Right here. Show him. <gasps> oh my! That's the right one. We just gotta wow. orient it. Wow! Yeah, we just gotta <gasps> orient it correctly. Wow! Wow! Muito now, bem. How, about, how about this one? Where does this one go? Wow. wow! Oh, what a smart little cookie! Muito inteligente. Very smart monkey bear. And this one, where does it go? Where does that one go? Show, show everybody. Show, show. Oh, oh, oh! Where does that one go? Show me. Look at it. You have to look at it. Well, we're working on it. Yeah. <laughs> well. For you guys that don't know yet, we have in, uh, several nicknames for Samuel and but one of them that even think when he was a newborn baby, when he was very very little, we started, like then started calling him Monkey and Monkey Bear and the uh, nickname <laughs> stick and like we just, we keep calling him Monkey Bear, Monkey Bear and this is, this is how Daniel calls Samuel Monkey. Monkey bear. <laughs> Tell it's because he is a little monkey bear. Yes, they're very, very, very rare creatures. <laughs> they get into a lot of trouble. They specialize in making messes. But they're so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. So what time is it right now? Is it time for nap? It is. Okay. So let's see if we'll, how how he's gonna do for the nap. Hey, monkey bear. Vamos, vamos dormir? 
Vamos na sonequinha? Tá na hora da sonequinha. Ai. He knows. He knows. He just knows. He's been complaining about taking naps. He wasn't that way. Now he's just protesting and... All right. Of Come course, on. he just protests, but then once he's in bed, he usually... He falls right to sleep. Yeah, but we'll see today oh, how he's going to do it. Come Let's on, see. Okay. Okay. All right. Bye, now. Bye, now, little bear. I would say he's doing fairly well with sleeping through the night. He... Since he was born, we never had uh, really uh, any issues about Samuel as far as sleeping through the night. He, he had never, um, like in his entire life, I can tell you that we had never had a sleepless night, right? No, even when he was really, really little, when he was first born, even, of course he wake, you know, all little newborns, they'll wake up several times a night. Yeah, um, maybe three, four times a night, but... But he was always a good sleeper, even from day one, and real quickly we kept, you know, we kept uh, um, reinforcing, like, the feeding every two hours or sometimes a little less. So, like, I, I do believe that as the baby grows, he stretch the... Uh, intervals is how you say it. Yeah, you, that's what I meant. We kept stretching the intervals. You stretch as the baby grows, but you need you really need to observe your own baby because you can't uh, like based on our experience with Samuel, he's one baby. He has his own needs and his own cycles, but you need to observe your own baby, see and get to know how the your baby cycle is because some babies will sleep 12 hours like like samuel but some other babies will require less hours some babies will sleep less and some babies will sleep more uh we just had a had a uh, an experience that samuel has always slept at least 11 hours a, a, an hour uh from eight weeks old and so far like he we never had troubles of course the only time we have trouble is when there's some circumstances like when he's teething right now he's teething he has five teeth at the same time it's hard on a baby it's Poor a baby. lot of it's a lot of it's painful and even if you give medicine and everything that he's they still feel pain sometimes and there are some days they're good some days they're bad but it's a circum circumstance it's not like that he's like that every single day. And there are other circumstances, like teething is one of them, but sometimes there are like growth spurts that they need to uh, be fed more often, which maybe that's what's happened yesterday with Sam, or maybe it was teething, one of, uh, one of them. We're also making quite a bit of noise out here too. Yeah, yes, yeah, so last night we, was, we were with our, uh, my, my brother and sister-in-law, they were here, uh, and then uh, we, you know, we were making some noise and he woke up, so we, we, we're quite not sure why he woke up, but even if he did, uh, we know he's teething and he's more sensitive to things, and he's more, uh, has more irritability than normal, and so, I mean, for me, that's completely normal for any baby. A lot of people have such problems with that, and that's kind of one of the reasons we wanted to share uh, our experience and what what we did with Samuel and the result that it uh, that it gave us. But we had so many people asking us what do, what did we do, and uh, there were there were some friends that they don't sleep, uh, they have sleepless nights after sleepless nights, and they're just struggling with their babies, and they asked us to share our experience. I want to be able to help if I can help and maybe my experience can help some of you. That's what worked for us and there's several reasons we started doing this. Um, one of them is that I do believe that we need to establish good habits with babies and one of them is the eating patterns. Like I do believe we need to have meal times and I also think we need to have uh, nap time and sleep time time to go to bed it's time there's time uh, there's a time to do everything in this life and I think it's very important when you train your kid for physical development physical development as as important as a mental development and spiritual development and uh, in my religion my personal beliefs I think it's a principle that you keep as uh, is if you develop the maximum as you can in all areas just because it's physical doesn't mean it's less important than mental and spiritual uh, development. So for me, physical development, 
everything that that will affect his health for me it, it's important and should shouldn't be neglected and sleep for me affects his health if he wasn't sleeping through the night and he wasn't sleeping any night at all and he was fatigued or if he was super tired he would be a completely different babe i can tell you from the days that for by any circumstance that he does not sleep well uh like there were nights that, that there were days that let's say he did not take any nap the whole day and he has a different behavior he has a different humor he has a different disposition so i can tell when my baby does not get his naps there is a big difference between that and i can say that the uh throughout this uh 18 months the same is about to be 18 months the samuel has been so much he's a so content baby and happy and he he's always in a good mood what, don't you think that he's in, Oh yeah, he's, uh, in fact, that's one of the things that people say about him all the time is that he's always in such a good mood. Every time people see him, he's always uh, laughing and smiling and talking and he's just a happy baby. And a lot of, th a lot of people a lot of think... A personality type. Yeah, uh, there is a personality aspect, but I also think it's not just about being lucky parent. I don't think that, oh, we guys lucky that he just lived through the night. I don't think it's about that because I do think you need... Uh, I think we did help Samuel. If we didn't do anything, for example, if we did not have meal times, if we did not have time to go to bed and time to go to nap, I don't think he would have the natural and biological... Uh, it just, I think, simply well-rested and well-adjusted babies are happy babies. Yeah. Um, and so a establishing a routine on meals and sleep times, play times, and those types of things, uh, especially meals and sleep time, which I think are, uh, are very linked, especially in the early, early parts uh, of life, like the first several weeks and stuff, there's uh, eating and sleeping, the, the patterns that are set with those two things are... Um, are totally linked. Um, I mean, that's basically all babies do when they're first born: is they they eat, they sleep, and they fill diapers. <laughs> so oh, I cry. so I thought because it's gonna affect his health, and he's gonna be a completely different baby uh, if he doesn't sleep to the night. Let's say just about me as an adult. If I don't sleep the whole night, people that have lived with me, my roommates can tell. Like when I didn't sleep very well, I was a different person the other day. I didn't produce very well. I, I felt my day was not productive at all. I couldn't, my my mind was not very clear to study when I was in classroom. I would be sleepy the whole day. Yeah, it definitely affects your and mood. And like it affects my mood, like I'll be in a bad mood. <laughs> <laughs> it is true, it is true. It does affect, sometimes I feel like I'm an old lady because I like to, I love to go early to bed. I always loved going early. You know, and I do think when I go to bed earlier, like I'm so much better the next day. I feel that I have so much energy. I feel like I, I feel like so happy that I, you know, it's just different. And with a baby, for me, it's the same thing. And if that's gonna affect my mood, if it's gonna affect my mental uh, and spiritual, you know, my character and my disposition during the day, then I need to. Uh, consider that with my baby because if I wanted to form his character and I wanted him to have a good content character and happy then I should care about how he sleeps right yeah I think all those uh, in character development your kids which uh, I think most of you will agree is our primary role as parents is the the molding and shaping of our kids characters um, they're the amount of sleep and uh, that they get and rest uh, that they get directly affects their mood and their uh, really their outlook on life, which ultimately is going to shape their character. So I mean, it's uh, it seems like something that is that a parent can learn out of the convenience of wanting to be able to have a full night's sleep, uh, a day when the baby can sit down, take some naps and allow the parent to catch up on some of the things that they that they need to do around the house uh, but really that's not the most important reason for establishing these patterns um, those are you know some some things that are convenient about it but the most important thing is is the the physical development of uh, of the baby which in turn is going to um, is going to affect his uh, emotional development his spiritual development 
every mm -hmm. aspect of that kid's life is going to be improved by having a well-established uh, pattern in his uh, sleep and rest pattern. I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering, okay, you have to, we have tell, told us uh, why, like our purpose and why we decided to do that with Sam and I, I guess you guys understood now at, that, at this point. But then you want to know more concrete information about, okay, how did you do that and how did we actually make Samuel sleep? We follow a schedule and I know there's a lot of people that follow this, this schedule on the clock. We did not do on the clock. I want to be clear about this. There is a balance between the clock and and on demand. Uh, on demand. On you, when you are when I'm feeding the. I mean, I never did on demand schedule. But mothers that do on demand, they it's a child led feeding. So it's whenever the baby wants and cries. Basically, you're going to feed the baby. And the on the clock is is really like. You only see the clock and no matter what happens, if the baby cries or nothing, you just based on the clock. And with us, uh, the method we used, it was in this Baby Wise book that I told you before in the other video. And it, it's based, it's a balance between the clock and the child-led on-demand uh, feeding. And what means is that you don't ignore the baby. Like for example, last night is a good example of that. Samuel was crying, he was hungry, he was very hungry. Would I just say, okay, no, night sleep is not time to sleep, to eat? You know, no, I did I did feed him. I not only fed him once, but I fed him twice. He woke up at 8 o'clock at night, one hour later, and then around 10 or so, he woke up again, and I fed him again. And he both times, I, I knew he was hungry, and I was a, it was a circumstantial, but I was sure that he was hungry, okay? Because after he ate, he didn't cry anymore. Okay, so uh, there is a balance because if you see your child and you're pretty sure your child is crying, you're not going to say, no, it's in the clock and no, I'm not going to feed it, it's, I need to wait two, three hours. No, you're going to feed your baby. You're always going to feed a hungry baby. Yeah, it's important not to be on one ditch or the other, not being yeah, in the be ditch in... of being just on the clock and only feeding or only doing things based on what time it is. Yeah, uh, don't be on it's strict. And at the same time, you don't also want to be in the other ditch in which you... Every single uh, are cry, led entirely you... by uh, by a baby's wants and wishes, and offer no st no structure or uh, or schedule uh, for the baby to adjust to. I think the uh, the approach that that the that our the book here um, instructs and that we chose to follow uh, is one of being in the middle of the road. You yes. want to have a schedule, you want to follow that schedule, but at the same time not ignoring the needs of your baby. Exactly. Because every baby is different. What worked for one baby may not necessarily work for the next. And so you need to adjust your schedule, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes on a daily basis. According to the daily needs basis, of your baby. According to their needs, yeah. Yeah, so like sometimes it'll take you three, four days, sometimes five days to adjust your schedule. Because the, the book will, will give you some samples to start it if you want to follow one of the samples they have and you can just make some changes as, as you observe your baby and okay no this is too little time this is too much time and you scale you're going to adjust according to your baby's needs i think that's very important not just you just being okay now i'm gonna follow this is casual this is what's gonna be i don't think this is the right way of doing it you need to get to know your baby you need to understand what what is the cycle of your baby how long it takes so when sammy was a newborn his schedule was very different than the one today and I started actually writing a schedule when he was a few weeks old but when he was a newborn I honestly didn't do a schedule because I was still reading the book and I wasn't quite there yet but when he was about 16 weeks old is, is when I went back from Brazil and when I went to Brazil he was very young and that's when he started sleep through the night but I, but I wasn't having a schedule I only had in my mind that he was gonna have a moment to be awake a moment to be uh, sleeping and a moment to be fed and that was the cycle it was a, a, a feed uh, feeding the baby having awake time and, and sleeping and I 
for me it was when he was born it was between one hour and 30 minutes and two hours that the, the the three the whole cycle needed to last one hour and 30 minutes to two hours and that's what i had in my mind i like i i started like but of course the problem is when you do that that you, you don't have a schedule is that every day your your times will, will fall in a different how are you gonna say like your agenda will fall in a different schedule every day because you're not having the same times every day. I don't know if that makes sense for you. Like if I don't have a schedule, if I say, okay, today start at seven and I was going to be every two hours. Tomorrow your day is not gonna start at seven o'clock. It may start a little later. So what I, what I started doing is that I had two strict times, which was the time to wake up and the time to go to bed. Those are the only two moments that I was strict. When it's time to wake up, was uh, when he was newborn, I would wake up at 6.30 a.m. And it was for a long time waking up 6.30 a.m. And he would go to get bed at 7.30 p.m. Because at that time, he was sleeping 11 hours a night. Then later, he stretched. And now he was, wake, he was sleeping 12 hours a night. And that's when I started waking up at 7 a.m. And he was going to bed at 7 p.m. So those times are never changed every single day. If it was 6.30 and, and, and 7.30, then I'll, I, I was restricted the time to wake up and the time to, to sleep. If he was sleeping during the morning, I would wake him up because it was time to get up. And um, that, that that's the way I was. And the um, when he was 16 uh, 16 weeks old he had a uh, 6 30 feeding then he had a 10 a.m feeding 1 p.m feeding 4 p.m feeding and then uh a 7 30 p.m feeding and, and like right now uh, right now he's 18 months he's about to be 18 months old he's 17 months but he has two naps a day and he wakes up at 7 a.m then he wakes up he eats and he has a play time then at nine o'clock he has a morning nap 12 p.m he has lunch 12 30 he has a play time right after lunch he starts playing 1 p.m he goes to bed for an afternoon nap and then at five then he wakes up and then he plays and uh, around 5 30 he has dinner Sometimes it's 4.30 and six, between 6 and 7 he has a, fa a family time but it's also the bedtime routine because I need to be done with the family time routine at 7 and at 7 p.m. he goes to bed. So between 6 and 7 we play a little bit with him but then after that we need to go to the bed routine that he goes to bed. We give him a bath, he goes, uh, we do our worship like as a family worship with him, we read him. Uh, a little bit Bible story or a um, yeah a Bible story a story for him and he goes to bed at seven. So he's currently sleeping twelve hours a night and this is how his schedule is. How he the schedule looks like now. Uh, another thing that we also um, get some questions on is. Um, People will say like, well, that's it's it's good, you know, to ha to have a schedule. It's good to have uh, a routine, everything for your child. But why is it so important to start that right from the time they're born? Um, like we have some friends that uh, they decided to uh, to wait until the uh, their baby was was almost two, I think, right? Mm -hmm. uh, before try before really establishing set patterns. And uh, I think they're have. They're having some moderate success in establishing them now, um, but it's a lot harder. And not I, impossible, of course. Not, it's not never too no. late. But it's it's so much easier to to l learn a good habit right from the beginning and then just continue with it than it is to teach a uh, I guess you could say a bad habit or a uh, um, or an alternate habit uh, and then later try to unlearn that and establish a new good habit. Mm -hmm. And that's so, it's, it, it seems uh, to us to be uh, so much more of a, so much more work that way. And it's, uh, and it's also a big change for the baby. Uh, they're, they're already as accustomed to a certain way of doing things, um, which is without a, without a, a routine, without a pattern, and then now try to establish it later. And, it's, and that's a big change for them. Uh, but if you learn the proper habit right from the beginning and then just continue with that, it's a, it's much easier for the baby. It's a lot easier to get them to uh, to adjust to those uh, routines, those schedules, uh, and that pattern. 
and I think it's just better. It's all around better for everybody. What do yeah. you think? Well, I do think it's better when the baby is little because the baby is not going to uh, cry as much as a big big baby. A big baby or two, a toddler, two year old or more, uh, they will protest because they were used with a different habit of sleeping before. They will, if they were sleeping with their mothers or if they had a different habit, they would just it would, if they had a habit of waking up, for example, every single night to be fed, or if they were, if they were, if they could ha uh, wake up and sleep anytime they wanted before, like they can just be awake with their parents until midnight if they if they wanted to watch the movie with whatever. Uh, it, later, if the the parents wanted to change their minds and say no, okay, now it's gonna be 7 p.m. You're not gonna be able to be awake as much as you want, or you're not gonna be able to wake up to be fed, or you're not gonna be able to wake up and go to uh and do whatever you want you know it's just it's gonna be a it's gonna be difficult it's, it's gonna be less it's gonna be more difficult to uh to change that habit mm -hmm. so yeah so good habits establish them early that's a that's so a big tip. we made that decision for us and not just me as a mother but we made the decision together daniel and i he slept over two hours, almost two hours and a half. That is a good nap. He's a little whining right now because he woke up and he wants to let me know. So let's go get baby. Hey, I think he, he wants breastfeed, so that's why he's a little complaining. Yeah. Let's see if after he after I feed him if he's gonna be in a better mood, hopefully. I think it's part of the teething process that he's feeling so much pain if he has He's more irritable and he's more irritated than normal. <laughs> See, now he's irritated that I'm talking, so I'm gonna stop talking. Say hi. Much better mood now? <laughs> yeah, after we've had, to, yeah, after we've had a little bit of milk. <laughs> she's in so much better mood now. Is isn't that incredible how breastfeeding makes a whole difference? <laughs> Are you hungry? Você tá com fome? Olha aqui. Uh, this is why. I made some spaghetti. I made some tomato sauce. Homemade. Yummy, yummy. A salad. And there is a lasagna that I made. We're gonna have this meal. Yummy, yummy. Are you hungry, Daniel? Starving. Let's eat it. Mmm, yummy. <laughs> As you can see, pasta is one of his favorite foods. Muito bem. Muito bem. Okay, guys, I hope this was um this was a very good talk. And uh, I hope that helped you somehow, and we'll see you guys later. All right, bye guys. Bye.